ပေါင်ကိုယ်ရချောက်ဆက်ချောက်ခုနေညမာနိုင်ငံတရားစီရင်ထုံးစာမျက်နှာနံပါတ် 10 ဖြစ်ပါသည်ဆီဗယ်ရဗီရှင်ဘဖို့ဥတပေးဂျက်မတ်တိုရိုသီအပလီကန်ဖာစစ်ဥဟန်ရက်စ်ပွန်တန်စ
Then the court granted an adjournment to examine one of the petitioner witnesses, who was absent on the day fixed for hearing. At this day, the petitioner applied for the amendment of her written statement, which was, however, rejected by the learned chief judge on the ground that it was belated and that. The proposed amendment, if allowed, would involve the reopening of the entire case. The Lennon judge further remarked that the proposed amended written statement had not been filed with the application for amendment. This last remark of the Lennon judge appears to be incorrect, as the proposed amended. Written statement is found on page forty-eight of the trial proceeding. It has been argued at the outset by the Lennon advocate for the respondent that this revision does not lie on the authority of Madanshian versus Tankitkan Alliance Tankase one. It must, however, be at once pointed out that this application is one under Section Twenty Five of the City Civil Code Act, and not under Section One Hundred Fifteen of the Code of Civil Procedure. The powers of this code, under Section Twenty Five of the City Civil Code Act, are much wider than. Those is cyber under Section One Hundred Fifteen of the Code of Civil Procedure. The powers of this code under Section Twenty Five of the City Civil Code Act are much wider than those is cyber under Section One Hundred Fifteen of the Code of Civil Procedure, and the propriety or otherwise of an order. Passed by the city civil court can be called into question by this court. Fight, Dorsal versus Ramanandan, Chadia two. The sheet answer of the respondent argument against the application is the decision in Matangde versus Unyan and four others three. Where it was held that leave to amend pleadings is a matter in the discretion of the court, and the court would ordinarily be justified in refusing to allow amendment to raise new issues, especially when the parties have closed their respective case and only arguments remain to be had. The applicant cannot be permitted to convert the original defense into another of a fundamentally different and inconsistent character. The facts occurring therein can easily be distinguished from those obtaining in the case under review. In that decision, the proposed amended written statement was rejected. On the ground that it will bring about a complete change of front in the defense, in the instant case, what the petitioner proposes to do is to add further grounds of defense over and above the defense stated in the original written statement. The addition of new grounds by the defendant. In support of her case for rejection of the plaintiff suit, cannot be said to alter her case completely. In K. Lesman Rao versus Pavani Singh and another four, it has been decided that in a case where it is not likely to cause injustice or where it does not take. The defendant, by surprise, and where by the amendment, a plaintiff is only allowed to rely upon 
a new crown of relief, it would not amount to an alteration of the character of the suit or the introduction of a new case, and therefore amendment of the play can be allowed. The same view has been expressed in a key Ranjan Das Gupta Fasas B N Biswas Five. This decision relates to cases where the plaintiff has sought the amendment, but the principle of law involved therein were applied mutantis mutantis to the defendant asking for amendment. These decisions relate to cases where the plaintiff has sought the amendment, but the principle of law involved therein. Will apply mutantis mutantis to the defendant asking for amendment. Then in Narisin Prasad Bor Fasas Steve Brothers Limited C, it has been laid down that amendment of a plain and amendment of a written statement are not necessarily governed by exactly the same principle. Some important general principles are certainly common to both, such as the application for amendment, whether of a plain or a written statement, must be bona fide and must also be for the purpose of determining the real controversy between the parties and where it is just. But The rule that the plaintiff cannot be allowed to amend his plain so as to alter materially or substitute his cause of action or the nature of his claim has necessarily no counterpart in the law relating to amendment of the defence or the written statement, adding a new ground of defence or. Substituting or altering a defense does not raise the same problem as adding, altering, or substituting a new cause of action. Hence, the courts are inclined to be more liberal in allowing amendment of defense than of plain, and questions of prejudice are less likely to operate with same. Rigor in the former than in the later case. The facts of this case, however, do not require that I should express my opinion as to whether that decision lays down good law or not. It is, however, a clear instance where courts are inclined to take a rather. Lenient view of the application of amendment by a defendant. Another objection to the proposed amendment is that it is rather belated and that it would involve reopening of the whole case. It must, however, be borne in mind that there was any stage of the proceedings in Rule Seventeen. Order C of the Civil Procedure Code clearly connotes that the amendment can be made at any stage of the proceedings. Thus, it has been said in Secretary of State for India v. I M L A Seven and Gujarat Martin v. Ambika Prasad Tiwari and others eight. That an amendment can be considered even in a piece before the federal court or the privy council. The petitioner has, by the proposed amended written statement, raised two additional pleas, namely, a that the document filed as promissory note is in fact a bond, and b that. The mortgage, being a simple mortgage, is invalid for want of a registered deed. 
Now, the construction of a document, whether it is a promissory note or a bond, is a matter of law which can be raised at any stage of the proceedings. It will not involve the reopening of the entire case. The two additional pleas put up by the petitioner can be decided on arguments alone without adducing any further evidence. For the aforesaid reason, the order of the lower court is hereby set aside, and I derive that the proposed amended written statement of the petitioner be admitted and that the suit shall proceed according to law. The petitioner defended shall, however, pay debt 51 as cost to the respondent plaintiff.